You know, when you're one of the greatest sportsmen in the history of Canada, everybody remembers you and everybody celebrates you and everybody wants to emulate you. Now, when I was growing up, he was one of my heroes and 56 years on this planet, there wouldn't be enough time in the day to tell everybody what Toe Blake meant to Major League Hockey, to Montreal Canadiens, the sport of hockey in Canada, one of the, the greatest minds, one of the greatest cultures, one of the greatest players and just like Belleville and Reed, the two Richards and everybody else from those legendary teams he made a difference that will last forever now Joseph Hector Toe Blake uh, played the NHL from 35 to 48 with the Montreal Maroons and the Montreal Canadiens winning cups with both he led the NHL in scoring at 39 while also winning the Hart Trophy for MVP he also served as a captain of the Habs from 1940 to his retirement he won the Stanley Cup three times as a player in 35 Maroons and in the mini dynasty years with Montreal of the mid-40s in 44 and 46. While with the Canadians, he played on one of the greatest lines of all time with Elmer Locke and Maurice de uh, Richard, which was dubbed the punchline as all three were highly skilled players. Now in 2017, Blake was named as one of the 100 greatest NHL players in history. Now when he retired as a player in 51, he soon turned to coaching. After several years in the lower leagues, he was named the Canadiens coach in 55 and remained in that role until his retirement in 68. As a coach of the Habs, he won the Stanley Cup eight more times and helped Montreal become one of the most dominant teams in NHL history. Now, being born in a, uh, what is now a ghost town, Victoria Mines, Ontario, on August 21st, 1912. Not the biggest drink of water, ladies and gentlemen, 5'10", 162, but that was your normal size for a left winger. He played... Uh, some of his best hockey in the NHL, but also in junior and the senior leagues. Now, Blake was one of 13 children to Wilmer and our Zili Blake, 11 survived childhood. Wilmer, born in 1874, was originally from the States, Massachusetts, and moved to Canada around 1896, and was English and Irish ancestry. Arzili was born in Buckingham, Quebec. In 1877, her family de Fillon had arrived in Quebec in the 17th century. Wilmer and uh, Ar 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 Arzili married in 1898, and shortly after moved to Sudbury, Ontario for work. Soon after Blake's birth, the, the, the family moved to Coniston, as the mine Wilmer had been working at was slowly closing. Now, he played junior and senior hockey in the Sudbury area and was part of the 32 Memorial Cup champions, the Sudbury Cup Wolves. He played for the Hamilton Tigers of the OHA during the 35 season before he signed with the Montreal Maroons on February 22nd of that year. He made his NHL debut two days later on February 24th against Chicago. He played eight games of Maroons in 35, but was held scoreless. He did not play in any team's playoff games, but when the Maroons won the Stanley Cup, Blake's name was added to the trophy. Now, he then played for the Habs until his retirement in 48, winged the Hart in 39, the same year he was also the league scoring champion with 47 points. For the last eight seasons, he was team captain and again led the Habs to Stanley Cups in 44 and 46. In his later years, uh, in the later latter year, in which he incurred only one minor penalty, he became the first Hab ever to wear the, wear the, to win the Lady Bank for gentlemanly uh, play, while only Matt Snassel has replicated since as of 2022. Now, while playing with the Habs, he was again he was part of the punchline with Locke at center and the Rocket at, at right wing. He scored a Stanley Cup clinching goal in the 44 Stanley Cup Finals at 9-12 in the first overtime of Game 4, helping the Habs to a four-game sweep sweep of Chicago. The following season, the punchline became the second set of line mates ever to finish first, second, and third in initial scoring in one season. Locke had 80, Richard 73, and Blake 67. He followed the Boston Bruins crowd line in 1940 and would be followed by the Detroit Red Wings production line in 1950. Now, during the loss to the Rangers on January 11, 48, Blake collided with Rangers skater Bill Juzda, awkwardly hit the boards and suffered a double fracture of his ankle and his NHL career. In 1998, he was ranked number 66 on the Hockey News list of the NHL's 100 Greatest Players of All Time to date. At the time of his retirement for the NHL, Blake was second all-time in career scoring with 527 points, 21 behind Bill Cowley for the all-time record. 
He had the all-time record for career points in the playoffs at his retirement with 62 and 58 games. Now, after eight years coaching several of the Habs minor league squads, he was named head coach of the Habs on June 8, 1955, replacing Dick Irvin Sr. Now, Blake was fluent in French and because his mother was Franco-Ontarian, and Canadian's management also said that Richard's former line mate was better suited to control the Stars' explosive temper, which had led to a riot in the past spring. Now, Blake coached the Habs for 13 years, winning the Cup eight times, the most titles for any coach in the team's history, and second most league-wide after Bowman, who won five Cups with the Habs, one with Pittsburgh, and three with the Red Wings. His 500 regular season wins are still the most in Habs history. Notably, he won championships each in his first five seasons as a head coach, the streak being an NHL record that may never be broken. The only other person to have performed a similar feat in his first five seasons as a coach or manager of any particular team in North American pro sports is Casey Stengel of the Yankees, although unlike Blake's case, the Yankees were not the first team Stengel managed. Now, Blake retired after Habs clinched the cup in Game 4 in the 68 Finals versus St. Louis, ending 33 consecutive years at ice level with the Habs. Now, Blake turned down Jacques Plante's request to wear a mask during games for fear to would impair his vision. However, after a shot from Rangers player Andy Batgate broke Plant's nose in a game of number 1st, 59, Blake finally relented and arrested his goalie history. Now, uh, again, born a ghost town in Victoria Mines, he was raised playing outdoor hockey in a team of Coniston near Sudbury. His nickname came from a childhood experience. His younger sister had difficulty pronouncing his name, rendering it as something like Heck Toe. Thus, the nickname Toe arose and ultimately replaced the nickname he had been given as a school scorer, the old lamplighter, because he often activated the light behind the goal. Now, after retiring from the Habs, uh, Blake and his family resided permanently in Montreal. In 52, he opened Toe Blake's Tavern at the corner of Guy Street and St. Catherine in Montreal, just a few blocks from the Forum. It was a very popular pub and eatery, but closed in 1983. Now, unfortunately, he suffered from Alzheimer's in his final years. When respected writer Red Fisher visited him in the nursing home in 89, Blake could not recognize his old friend. Blake died on May 17, 95, at the age of 82. He is also the uncle of Mike Blake. Now, uh, Toll was elected to the Hockey Hall of Fame in 66 in the player category and was made a member of the Order of Canada in 82. A park located next to, his, next to his Montreal West home is named in his honor. In 2011, the community center in Blake's hometown of Coniston, Ontario was renamed the Toll Blake Memorial Arena in his honor. Now, his first season in the NOJHA was with the Cochrane Dunlops. Then he moved on to the Sudbury Cub Wolves of the NOJHA in 31 and also played with the Sun Sudbury Industries of the NOHA that season. Now with the he also played with the Cub Wolves in a Memorial Cup and with the Sudbury Royals in the Allen Cup playoffs. Now 32 split time between the Sudbury Cub Wolves of the NOJHA and the Falconbridge Falcons of the NOHA. Now four years with the Tigers excuse me, three years with the Tigers of the OHA Senior League. He also played the Allen Cup in 34. Now, again, played with the Maroons in 35. 36 split time with Providence of the Can-Am League, and he had his first goal with Montreal in 36. Now, from 37 to his uh, retirement from the Habs in 48, he was well known for scoring well over 20 goals. Biggest season, and I think his best season to me, was 45, where he had 67 points in 49 games, including 29 goals. Now, 49, he was back to the minor leagues AHL, where he played 18 with the Buffalo Bisons, and 50 and 51, he played with the Valleyfield Braves of the QSHL. Final NHL totals, 577 games, 235 goals, 292 assists, 527 points, 25 goals in the playoffs and 62 points. Now, the coach again uh, for the Habs, he, uh, he won the Cup five straight between 56 and 60. Uh, first place in each other in 61 62, and in 64, <coughs> no Cup title, unfortunately. The, he lost in the semifinals four straight years. 65 and 66, he won the Stanley Cup. Uh, 67 lost in the Cup final, and 68 he uh, finished first in the East and won the Stanley Cup. Total coaching record: 500, 255, and 159, 914 games. Now, what really stands out for me, uh, Toe Blake, 
is the amount uh, on these trophy cases. It's amazing. Again, Stanley Cup of the Maroons in 35. Stanley Cup as a player, 44 and uh, 46 with Montreal. Inclusive coach, 56 to 60, 65, 66, 68. Uh, tying Henri, Henri Richard for most cups by Hab. The Hart in 39, the scoring leader in 39. Lady Bing in 46, NHL first All-Star, 39-40-45, NHL second team All-Star, 46, and also Blake, uh, one of the greatest uh, players of all time. Now, how good was Toll Blake? Well, the comparison would be this. Uh, some people saw him play and compared him to kind of the modern-day Habs like Steve Shutt, Jacques Lemaire, uh, some some question the modern players as well of recent years, Stan Coase and Connor McDavid. He, one night he could be a playmaker, one night he could have been a goal scorer. But uh, when Elmer Locke and, and Richard and Toe Blake were together, if they would have played a full 80 game season, they probably would have averaged between 100 and 130 points each. They were that good. And you got to remember, ladies and gentlemen, Montreal was on the outs for years. 44 and 46 was a uh, were uh, were cups that saved the franchise, but later on uh, when he uh, when he coached Montreal, there was a lot of eagles on that team and a lot of lot of stars, and he was balancing off the, the demands of Beliveau, uh, Ferguson, uh, you know the uh, Doug Harvey, uh, different people, uh, you know the second and third liners, where they weren't like forty goal scores, but he had a good mix of of francophones and anglophones and. You know, the top players. Donnie Marshall once said, Co being coached by Toe Blake is being coached like, like a painter, like a Picasso. And that's what sums it up. But the modern era, uh, the Stanley Cup Finals are on this week. You do good to read some of the books that have been uh, written about uh, Toe Blake, Stan Fisher's books, The Lines in Winter, the very important Montreal Canadiens book. Toe Blake was an everyman, but Toe Blake uh, was kept the cohesion of those Habs teams. I don't think uh, Maurice Richard would have been as good were it not for Toe Blake and Emmer Locke because just because you're a superstar look what's happening with the Yankees this year with Aaron Judge. You can be as good as you want but if you have people supporting and backing you up it means a lot. And I, I, I think Toe Blake should be higher than 66. I would give easily top 50 because Toe Blake paved the way for that sort of player which was getting more and more common in the, the 50s, 60s, and 70s. So that's a legend of the great Toll Blake. If you like what we're doing here with our Montreal Canadian podcast, give us a like, comment, subscribe, or share. And don't forget, the Montreal Canadiens maybe had a, uh, had a tough year, but we are Canada's team, no matter how you, you cut it. And there's 50 players in Montreal Canadiens history that have legendary stories that need to be told, if not more. And let me tell you something. It's an honor to be a Montreal fan because the past is the future, the future is the past. If that makes any sense. Thanks for listening. Bye.